But let's now go straight to our top story. Tell me one thing. What comes to your mind when you hear a mass shooting in America? Say some gunman has opened fire in a people in a ballroom or at school children, party goers, people praying in places of worship or just people walking on the street, minding their own business. What comes to your mind when random, when innocent people are shot by gun-bearing Americans? I'm guessing, like me, you to ask yourself a very simple, very basic question. Why does this keep happening in America? What explains this inexplicable gun violence in America? What explains the number of people who can just pick up a gun and go and shoot random strangers? On the 21st of January, a 72-year-old man walked into a ballroom in California and he shot whoever he saw. 11 people died. They all come out of their homes that evening hoping to bring in a great Lunar New Year, a monster had other plans for them. Two days after this incident, two students were killed in a school dedicated to helping at-risk youth. A teacher was injured. There was another shooting. Later that day, seven people were killed in Northern California. At that time, at the time of this particular shooting, California's governor, Gavin Newsom, was actually meeting the victims of the ballroom shooting in a hospital. He said he was pulled away from their bedside only to be briefed about yet another shooting. Imagine that, just a couple of hours after this incident, two people were killed in Chicago. All of this was on the 23rd of January. Then on the 24th of January, three people were killed in Washington. There were at least 39 shootings in the first 23 days of this year in America. More shootings than days. More than 1,200 people have been shot dead in the US so far this year. That, of course, includes suicides, homicides, but at least 120 of these victims are children. 120. 120 children killed in gun violence. What explains this? Those leading the country don't seem to have an answer. Only in America do we see this kind of carnage, this kind of chaos this kind of destruction of communities and lives and confidence and a sense of safety and belonging, which we all yearn for, regardless of our political stripes. But surely these are the people who should be finding a solution to this problem instead of just complaining about it because it has gone on long enough. And they've all failed at their job and it's not them alone. Gun violence isn't new in America. This is not something we're talking about for the first time. In 2022, for example, more than 44,000 people died of gun violence. More than 47,000 in 2021. More than 45,000 in 2020. You get my point. Now, here's my question. Why has the United States failed to address this problem, which clearly stems from the fact that anyone and everyone can own and operate a weapon in the United States? This is obvious. The checks are lenient. The black market is rampant. But frankly, you don't even need a black market because the weapons, you can just go and buy them. And there's no limit to how many weapons that there are in the U.S. The result is this. America has more firearms than people. It's true. There are 120.5 guns for every 100 residents. 1.2 guns for every man, woman and child and baby in America. And there's no way to tell which resident uses his weapon against whom and who all on any given day. Nowhere else in the world do you have a situation like this. And it's so obvious. That is the reason why you're having these mass shootings. That is the reason why you're having this gun violence in America. And you don't have it in any other country in the world. Which brings us back to the same question that I guess many people in America are also asking. Virtually everyone in America should be asking this question. Why is it happening? Now, I'd say it's a combination of two things. It's a combination of historic wrongs and present day inaction. Historically, the Second Amendment gives Americans the right to bear firearms. It says, and I quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, that's in the American Constitution. But that line was written in 1791, 232 years ago. At that time, there were no assault rifles. At that time, there weren't handguns. We're talking about 
you know, flint stocks. There, there were different types of, of weapons that were used. So you have to ask yourself, is it still relevant today? The gun lobby swears that it is, but at what cost? This right, the right to keep and bear arms, has become a threat to people's right to life in America. Meet Nandapu Devan. She was killed in Chicago 10 days after he landed in the U.S. from India. He was a fresher at a university there. His American dream was cut short, but he is unfortunately not the only person. Now, the obvious question is, can't American lawmakers do anything to change this dangerous reality? They can, but not many will. And that's because of the all-powerful gun lobbies in America. You know, the rights, uh, the likes of the NRA, the National Rifle Association. Now, this group alone sets aside $3 million annually to influence gun policy. And that is just the official figure. Unofficially, the NRA provides nearly $250 million every year, according to many accounts. Where does this money go? NRA funds are difficult to track. Some say they land up in the pockets of influential lawmakers. And that's one of the explanations for why the lawmakers are not willing to do anything about the American gun problem. And for more on this, we're now going to be joined by veteran journalist Bern Debusman, who's a writer on international affairs, has been a Reuters correspondent for from more places than I can count. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Now, when the rest of the world looks at a situation in the United States, unfortunately, every year it seems to be the same story. Every month it seems to be the same story. Mass shooting after mass shooting after mass shooting. I don't think any of us can completely understand why this cannot be fixed. Why is it so difficult to have some sort of control on guns in the US? Well, <clears throat> Well, that's a difficult story. I think, you know, the, uh, the attempt to have control on guns, I think that train has, has left. There are 425 million guns in the United States, which is more than the population, which is now 330 million. And uh, getting these out of circulation is basically impossible. So what is happening, it's in many states, it's much easier to buy a six pack of beer than it is to buy a semi-automatic rifle or an assault style rifle. And every shooting creates another shooting. Every shooting uh, also <laughs> creates more profits for the gun industry because after every single shooting, sales of guns go up. Uh, Mr. Nibusman, individuals carrying guns is one thing, and that's probably what the Constitution was talking about. But just take a look at the last one month. I'm sure that the framers of the US Constitution would not have intended a baby in diapers to be walking around waving a gun. And that happened very recently. They would not have been intending a six-year-old to go into a school and shoot his teacher. That also happened just recently. This, this is not what the constitution makers in the United States could have possibly been visualizing. No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But changing the const constitution is basically impossible because there are so many people who insist, you know, this is our right. And the fact that a toddler in diapers, wanders around the lobby of an apartment block, says a lot about the parents, says a lot about how common it is guns are in, in, in American households. That six-year-old got his mother's gun, a legal gun, from, uh, from the cupboard. And she claims that, no, it had a trigger lock, but obviously it didn't, because otherwise people wouldn't have, wouldn't have died. So uh, it's, uh, for me, it's like having COVID without a vaccine. Well, Mr. Devusman, on that rather grim note, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you so much. Let's hope that something gets done, but it does seem difficult. Thank you for having me.